From Palo Alto, California, it's The Cube, covering VMware Women Transforming Technology 2019. Brought to you by VMware. Hi, Lisa Martin on the ground at VMware in Palo Alto, California for the fourth annual Women Transforming Technology event, WT Squared. One of my favorite events, and I'm pleased to welcome back to The Cube, one of the leader, female leaders at VMware, Lily Chang, the VP of the, of the Strategic Transformation Office. Lily, it's so great to have you on the program again. Thank you, it's my pleasure and honor to be here. So this event, one of my favorites, as I mentioned, even just walking up to registration this morning, the energy, the excitement, the support. It's in the air. Yes. And then you walk into the keynote and it was kicked off this morning with such an incredible presentation. And Yammer was actually mentioning earlier that it's about 1,500 people just in person today, not even mentioning the live stream. So the momentum in just four years that you guys are creating is huge. Yes, VMware is a great place for diversity and inclusion. That is one of our company's uh, strategic motif. We believe that in order to basically create the best technology in the world, today was the evolution and the advancement of all these technology working together. We are servicing all genders, all origin globally. So that means the creation of this we need to bring all these cultural aspects to bring into our design thinking. So when we solve a problem, we are not solving it in a mono fashion. We actually can look at multiple facets. So having this event is part of our passion, is really part of our DNA now. I think that's fantastic. That's inspirational for other companies to really look at. It's not just an event that VMware puts on. This is really changing VMware from within as well. Yes, this uh, change process has started uh, quite a while ago. I would say inherently our genetic nature of uh, VMware is that we actually do believe in all genders. Our original founder and the CEO was a woman, right? And so we pioneered virtualization and we believe in women leadership. We believe in all levels of women innovation together with men and all the origin globally in the world, right? That's fantastic. So I want to, last year we talked uh, with you, which was fantastic, we're happy to have you back. I want to talk about something that you guys recently launched in about the last year, helping women return to work. Tell us about Tara and yes. what it is helping women, how they are able to get back into technology. Yes, so this is one of my favorite topic. Um, basically, we talked about glass ceilings for decades, about women in terms of how you break the glass ceiling, how you identify it, how you work around it, and all these things. There is a huge transparent glass ceiling being built worldwide for a long time, and that is basically women care about the society, women care about the family, so is, so is all the genders as well. However, there's a lot of the women workforce, they may be technically very achieving in terms of their career or academic side. They have to basically take care of a parenthood, take care of family for various personal reasons. After a couple of years, their passion for the technology still exists. They want to join the workforce to propel the world. And basically, especially now with the technology, is put to a lot of technology for good to help sustainability, to help medical field, to help disabled people, all these things, right? But they're having a little bit of a difficulty to re-enter the workplace. And that's a glass ceiling because their technology knowledge may be a little bit dated because just the way how in the past 10 years, how VMware and all the other giants has propelled the technology world, right? It changes right? so quickly. It changes so quickly. Like three months is almost like a decade nowadays, right? It's moving in that quantum speed. So what we have done is basically we decided to create a Tara project. It's a woman return to work initiative. And we're basically launching specifically focus on India region, right? And basically, we are funding 15,000 women. And we are training them and brought them up to speed about technology, especially with our software defined data center and virtualization, networking, storage, right? So we are giving them a certification program 
and that is something in、uh, some part of the world that certificate means a lot. It's like a pedigree that indicate that you not only believe you actually know all this, you got the evidence that you really know it, and there are people that certifying you. So with that, that enable them to be able to jump back into the workforce with a full qualification, and with virtualization being dominant in the world, right? Basically, it's like something that it's really hot and really relevant, and we are also helping them to basically connect with our customers in India, so that they actually could be、uh, interviewed for future positions as well. So basically, it's an end-to-end -end strategic transformation to break that huge glass ceiling. A huge,、and、thick glass ceiling. So, fifteen、yes. thousand women. This、That's、was just、right. launched last year. How long is the certification program that they go through? We want to be able to、uh, achieve that goal in the next couple years, starting this year. Starting this year, fifteen thousand women in the next couple of years. In the next couple of years. Wow, we that's actually, impressive. We actually got a few thousands already. So in the beginning, for the first quarter or two, we're making very decent progress, and、uh, we have a community partner happens、yeah. to be Women Who Code, because they have a worldwide organization, and they're sending the community message out to promote this. We're also working really closely with the India government to push for this to get their recognition for this as well, because we believe that will be beneficial for these women we brought back to the workforce. There's multiple aspects. It's not just touching the hearts and the soul of many, many family, but it's also basically injecting quality, highly qualified and competent technical talent back into the India community、exactly. and industry, so that it actually can proliferate and elevate the entire India technology level. To so, say it's transformative, I feel like that word isn't even strong enough, Lily. That's Remarkable the potential that has, and you mentioned the involvement of women who could. You've been on the board there for quite a while, for more than three years now. And I was looking at some numbers. The, the growth of that community alone is is incredible. Over 180,000 members in 20 countries so far. You've done over 8,000 trainings, workshops, hackathons, conferences. Over 2.5 million dollars has been awarded in developer school and conference scholarships. Wow, the, the、right. momentum, momentum is, is very high. It is very high, and you said you're even launching another country this year. We, so we're not sitting on saying, okay, we're satisfied. We're never satisfied because the world goes on, right? So as the world expand, as the technology、uh, excel itself. We want to basically leap ahead with all this, so we're not stopping. So this year, Women Who Code and VMware, we are launching Costa Rica side. So we believe we actually open a lot of the region of the world and unlock the energy and the innovation and the communities, all gender, to work together in India, China, and Sofia. And we work really closely with a lot of the industry technical giants and women who go on propelling this tech woman community in U.S. and also in Europe. Now we believe Costa Rica is a very、uh, strategic site for VMware.、And、Tell us a little bit more about why is it so strategic for VMware? It's a strategic for a couple of reasons. We are doing、uh, as a world. We are working together as a global community and a global clock. So Costa Rica is time zone wise, very nicely either bridging between the other time zone with U.S. and also it's overlapping very well with the U.S. time zone. So they actually could do a lot of the key business execution, including operation and IT and customer support, technical support. So we do have technical people over there, but not enough technical woman momentum. We also believe the country can really use some help from us, so we're working with Women Who Code, and this is a decision we've been assessing for a while. But we believe that launching Costa Rica will actually make it blossom in that region of the world, not just Costa Rica. We're kind of looking that we hope it becomes a hub. That's incredible. Just the, but also the, not just what you're doing. With with Tara and with expanding women who code to Costa Rica, it's also the opportunity for actual economic benefits to these、yes. countries. But 
what I also am hearing is that, for example, with Tara, you're not, it's not just a VMware myopic, we want more women to come back to the workforce in That's India. Right. It's, we want them to, inter, to be introduced to our customer base so that they can network and they potentially can establish identify a report. other opportunities for employment. That's right. Even though they do not get a particular position when they are connected to a customer, that is a relationship and that is something that will stay with that woman and that talent for a while. And that is something that we feel is very important to connect all these critical uh, stakeholders together. So Tara has that facet as well. Yeah. And you mentioned that there's already been about a thousand or a couple of thousand a few women thousand. who've more already than, gone more through. More than uh, 2,500, I believe. Any favorite success stories that come to mind? Yes, my favorite success story is the very first Tara certified woman is a woman who co member. So we're very, very proud of that um, because that shows the partnership actually works. That means a lot of the technical curriculum and the monthly meetup and all these technical conferences that Women Who Co is trying to do, the scholarship they try to hand out, all those are kind of accumulatively paying off with Tara being the major critical push to push them over that glass ceiling limit, right? I just think that's fantastic. I was looking at the Women Who Code website just the other day and I saw that your event um, was sold out. Yes. Connect 2019. That's right. But just the, the momentum, the excitement, the support in this community that was growing, as we mentioned earlier, 180,000 plus. Tell us about the Connect event. Connect is a technical conference. We do talk a little bit about the leadership and the soft skill, but it has multiple technology track. In fact, this year, what we want to do is we want to start basically elevating into technology domain track because we now have a very successfully created leadership role like a city director, city lead. They incubated from less than 10,000 members in the past of three and a half years to 180,000 members. A lot of the kudos and credit go to them. But as a result, we have a wealth body of women talent that are highly technical and highly versatile in many, many fields, right? because we believe today for a, t for a talent to be successful in technology field, you cannot just specialize in one. If you look at IoT, you look at a blockchain, all these emerging stuff, it's not just about AI or machine learning, it's also about virtualization, about how well you can do the logic and the analytics and the data mining and the algorithms, right? So basically, we want to have multiple technology track and that will include things like cloud, like uh, blockchain, and then that gives also a possibility for women who go to create individual contributor volunteer track. Like we want to basically launch the notion of a cloud architect, right? So that give basically people a way to aspire the growth. And so they can actually measure the growth which is very good in the sense of that you know where you stand, you know you can plan for the next step. And so this is something that we want to be able to do. And we're basically launching that as well. Um, Connect also, VMware hosted, uh, opened a global Connect in India. This year, we had a breakthrough. We actually have more than a thousand attendees. Wow. So that's like uh, more than twice the jump from last year. Last year was about maybe 300-ish, right? So this is a tremendous growth. And basically, it's wonderful to see that there's a lot of technology track and the woman coming in sharing very openly about what they know. And the, the sharing and the learning and the coaching is part of the whole overall energy as well. So if we look at impact so far, the, the various impacts that you've talked about with both Tara, which is, is quite early in its uh, history, Women Who Code, WT Squared, and we look at say even in the US alone, 50% of the population is female. It's a tremendous amount of women mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. are, just women in general who are technologically savvy but are passed over for these positions. Then you kind of factor in into that 50%, how many of them are women who've had to leave the workforce for various reasons that we talked about earlier. There's a tremendous amount of, of women out there with skills who aren't being looked at. Where is 
Women Who Code and TAR, where are you on changing those numbers from 50% to you know, 47% to 45%. Do you have any sort of strategic goals in your office numbers wise? Well, for me personally, um, the, and for women who code, we want to basically be able to change the world. We want to offer uh, all the technical women who, in the world a choice for their career ladder. So Tara is a way to do it, to break one particular glass ceiling, right? And there's also a lot of these scholarships and all this is to help women to be able to do career transformative patient change. For example, Women Who Code as part of the Connect, we actually hand out five awards to recognize five outstanding women leaders, in our opinion. One of them, she started with a Women Who Code as an individual member. She was just a junior engineer. But in less than two years period, she is actually now a VP. That's a fast track. It's very fast track. So we believe in human power and potential. We especially believe in a woman that basically is underrepresented in, in a lot of the technology sectors. Our job is to unlock these potential. And there are barriers and roadblocks in various forms, right? Big and small. So. The job is really to unlock all of this, and we want to be able to move that needle up to towards the right direction with all these things that we're doing. So last thing here, let's finish with how you yourself have broken through many, many levels of glass ceilings to get where you are today. Share with us a little bit about your career journey. My career journey is uh, recently, about two and a half years ago, I moved from R&D world to strategic transformation office. It's, a, it's a one of these moments, I would say, is a glass a cliff, right? You're standing at the edge of this glass ceiling house and you're just about to plunge in. That was the feeling I got two and a half years ago. But you know what? I am so loving it. It is basically the best career decision I have ever made because there was a dimension that I could never have experienced and seen before because I spent decades in R&D. I built up a lot of these know-how and competency and I just work with the business world. But in the transformation office, we do end-to-end. -end. We actually bridge the two worlds together. So basically for me, it was a fantastic learning journey and it's just the empowerment and the trust I got from VMware's executives and all my coworkers. I feel like that is probably the most transformative decision I ever made. It's not just your shifting technology field within technical world. I literally shift into a, uh, by 180 degree to a different spectrum. But my job is to connect the end-to-end -end spectrum together, which is something that I feel has profound impact for the company, and I just love every minute of it. Oh, and I, I love that. That's that's a great story, and it sounds like what you're doing, you're just at the beginning of all of, all of what you're transforming. So I can't wait to interview you next year and to thank hear you. about every great thing that happens in the rest of 2019. Lily, thank you so much for thank coming Thank you so much for having me. My thank pleasure. You. Thanks. I'm Lisa Martin, you're watching theCUBE, coming to you from Women Transforming Technology, fourth annual at VMware. Thanks for watching. Thank you.